Not in the middle, you're not on the weed, well then we've got all this tree line along here. Don't have to. Just stop here and have a bit of a cast around here though first. Usually a very productive little area for bass. Conventional bass fishing straight under those trees. It always has been. But some of the most incredible tallies I've ever had have been cast and well short of the structure. So they're going that way, out this way. There you go. Now, there's the trees. Here we are. Oh, you're gonna pick all that. It's nice solid sort of a fish too. Oh, come on. Poor little punter got his He's swimming the pun around. But you'd expect these fish to be under the trees. Most bass fishermen do. But there's a lot more food out here. Oh, he's done it again. I've left me um, pliers on the dash of the car. I've seen the oars level. What a proper pair of scissors along. <laughs> Substitute pliers. That's it. Okay, there you are, nice little quarry hole bass. Now, hopefully, what my aim is today is to get as many fish as I can in the next hour. Just hope I've got an hour of battery life in the camera. And what the action is today is cast and crane. Cast down into the middle and wind back like this. I'm my own cameraman, so excuse the um, footage is a little bit rough on it. Yeah, they might have gone into the weed a bit too much then. I'm going to just wind in the rod back. That's the action we use. These are quite active bass, you know. They, they, they can swim faster than any lure you can crank back to the boat. You know, just work. Angles and directions. Yep, got another one. Ooh. Oh, I lost him. That's all right though, we'll get pick up more. Angles and directions, the more water you cover, the faster you wind. See, I'm just winding like that. He's hit me nearly on the surface, that one. It's all right though, we should get, I don't know, I'd hope for 10 in the hour, it'd be nice. They, they often come out and just gill slap it too, which is one of the main problems is you lose a lot of fish, but when the fishing's that good, um, as soon as you drop a fish, the main thing is just to get that thing back in the water again. Once you've gone, I've virtually done a 360 degree angle and I've got, dropped him there, one out here, you know, they're just everywhere. So the main thing is, is just to keep kicking along, cranking this lure back. You can imagine the speed you trawl at for bass. Well, this lure is ripping through at that speed at all angles and directions. The 
fish we're looking for today. The, yep, here's another one. Out in the middle. They're around that 280 to the 320. A, a good fish in this lake's 35 centimetres. Come on. Here's a nice one. They're all a bit up over the 26, 27 mark at the moment. But that one I dropped on, oh, no, he's a nice fish, this one. We're just, just pushing the 30 mark. That's number three since we've been in there with one dropped. Now, that's why we're dropping them. They're, they're coming out and just gill slapping them. And taking that back treble. They're barbless so they just drop out. Like they, they hit quite hard. They're very, very well conditioned. But anyway, that's, that's sort of the little lake bass that we're chasing. Um, I'll keep fishing, you'll see how many we get, but we should get quite a few. And all I'm using is a little tailor-made nugget, red and white, dull day, bright lure. I know the experts say the other way, but you'll see in this video the difference. Um, cast it out. I'll just crank it back. These, these fish are just cruising. They're active, they're looking for food. So. Just a matter of covering all this water. Oh, something I'll check. Is this, it, is this recording? Yeah, it's got a little record on. I wasn't sure. It'd be terrible if I was filming and yakking to this camera for an hour. We've got to turn it on. I've, I've heard people say, you know, if you want to come and fish and the peen and the quarry holes get out at night and that's when you get your fishing but with me I'd say the two hours before night style of fishing this is what gets them and I'm not putting it in one spot over and over we're just going random anywhere and everywhere and when I want to move up I'll make sure this lure is in the water behind me even the point where I'll um, Let the line out, let it sit there for a bit, and then crank up again. Often they'll follow. It's, it's the, what we're working on, what we're trying to catch these fish on is the vibrations. Simple as that. Just a big bright thing ripping through the water with a vibration that, that they can feel. I'm sure they can feel it. They, oop, they come along, they feel that vibration, and they come along the line, come behind it, bang, hit it. You, know, you often get them right at the boat. You have to just watch it with the light whippy rods because it's quite easy to um, snap a rod with them going straight underneath your boat. Yep, I'm on another one. Oh, he's a nice one too. Come on, mate. They're not, the, they're not monsters, but they're good fun. We've got a mate in our club, every time we say, how many did you get? He says, oh, 30. So let's see if we can get that many. What's that, number four? Okay. So I got here just on six o'clock. Well, probably would have liked to have been here at five. But as you can see, the, the fish were on straight away, so we've got here a little bit late. And like I was saying earlier, they, um, to switch off just on dark, or well, to the style of fishing that I use. But um, it's a fun style of fishing too, though, I might add. You, you end up getting a lot of lures out, so you get a lot of practice with your rod and your reel and your gear. I use an egg beater, not a bait cast, even though there's no structure or anything out here, but I get a little bit more distance out of my egg beater, especially with these light lures. And um, I get a lot more speed out of it. It feels like it anyway. 